Hello everybody and welcome to next C-Sharp XNA platformer tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning on how to create maps. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is to kind of show you what we're going to be aiming for and hopefully that will get you guys excited. Uh, so since I never made a video on the series a while, I decided to do something that you guys really want to get done. So um, getting the map stuff done, then we'll get the camera moving, screen scrolling. All that fun stuff and there's some people that have been um, informing me on specific things that they want me to focus on so I will get into that stuff uh, sooner or later now I want to say a special thank you to Formortsis sorry if I pronounced that wrong but uh, as some of you may know or may not know uh, my computer crashed about um, three weeks or to a month ago or whatever and uh, I lost all my files and because of that I didn't really want to redo uh, the platformer code uh, so he gave me the code that he had uh, which was fairly similar to mine uh, with a bit of minor differences so the code should be fairly similar uh, uh, if you notice something different you can let me know but it shouldn't really confuse you uh, so thank you special thank you to him okay so uh, we got this map right here and I'm gonna be walking you through on how to do this so I have my code set up but what I'm gonna do is just delete all of it and type it all over again but I just want to give you an overview on what was to come uh, so the only thing I'm going to keep is this text file right here but I will explain to you what uh, is gonna be going on with this text file uh, but instead of me having to rewrite all this I'm going to um, I'm gonna keep this over here uh, so I'm just going to delete the classes that I created and I'm going to create them all over again. Well, uh, f uh, for starters, okay, we have a, I created a map class, right? Um, and I made it a public class and it's map.cs, uh, nothing really in it. So I'm going to put in deleting that. And what you're going to want to do is create a layer class. And I'm going to be deleting this class because I want to walk you guys through it. I will copy all of this just in case I do make an error and just to see the error but I'm going to be deleting this permanently and so we're gonna recreate it uh, so what we're gonna do is create a new class and we're going to call this layer or layers or whatever you like to call it and we're gonna make this public uh, we're going to add in three namespaces so the XNA and the framework name namespace uh, the content and the graphics okay now first and foremost uh, what we need is a tile sheet okay uh, how games handle their tile maps or most games do is that we could have a bunch of different individual images and load them in separately right uh, but it's easier if you could load in one large image and then crop out the miniature images that you really need so what a tile set or a tile map or anything whatever you have to call it is is that it's a collection of images that you're going to be using on the current map or throughout the whole game so what we're going to do is my tiles are 32 by 32 tiles so whenever i need this tile i'll crop out this one whenever i need the green the grass tile i'll crop out that one whenever i need the platform tile which is the red tile i'll crop out that tile and i'll show you how to do that later um, since my tile is 32 by 32, my screen width was 800 by 600 before, but uh, 32 by 32 files don't fit evenly into that. So I just went to game1.cs and I changed the dimensions to 640 by 480 so it would fit in uh, more evenly. If you don't want to change your screen width, then you can make the block size 40 by 40 and it, it should fit in um, evenly. But anyways, let's get back to our layer class. So there's a number of things that we're going to want to do. So we're going to make a three-dimensional list of vector twos, and we'll call this our tile map. Okay. Uh, right here, we'll make a two-dimensional uh, list, and we'll say uh, layer. And we'll make a one-dimensional one called um, tile. Okay. Uh, we'll need our content manager, we need our file manager, uh, we'll need a texture 2D to store our tile set, and uh, there is more, okay, so we need our, uh, we need our tile dimensions, and uh, that'll be it for now, if I forget something, then I'll add in later. Oh yeah, lastly, but we need our layer number. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a property for that. Uh, call layer number, and we're gonna put it so we so we can set a value to it. Layer number equals value. Okay. So in our load content, we're gonna take in two things in our parameters. We're gonna take a content manager, and we're gonna take in our map ID. Okay, so that's the map that we're currently loading. Uh, so what our map is gonna consist of is that is gonna consist of the layers, and it's gonna consist of events. So we're not gonna get an event, get into events and stuff now. But what events are gonna do is that uh, say we get to the end of the level, or we have portals, or whatever we, or picking up idol items those are gonna trigger events and based on what those events are it does different different stuff but we're gonna have a different event class for that anyways now that we got our content in we gotta create a new content manager don't forget to put this dot content because we don't put this it's gonna think that we're talking about this content in here okay we have our service pro pro provider and we have content over there so uh, what we need to do is create a new instance of our file manager uh, so we gotta create something for our tile, uh, for our layer, and for our tile layer, or what is it? What did I name it? Tile map. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna say file manager dot load content. This should be familiar to you. So we're gonna be loading from. A new folder called maps and then it's gonna be our, plus our map ID plus our, our file extension so just to show you uh, what I created in my load folder I created a new folder called maps and in our in our maps folder that's where we're gonna be storing all of our maps okay uh, so let me go back to our layer.cs so the next one asks for attributes and content. So we gotta create uh, some lists for that. So two dimensional list of strings. So our attributes and our contents. Okay, and in here we gotta say attributes equals a new one and our contents. So you put our attributes and our contents. And last but not least, we're gonna put a layer in there. Since in our map file, we're gonna be storing events and the actual map, as well as the collision map. Uh, we, we gotta specify which one, which ID we're actually trying to load in. So after this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our attributes, load for our attributes, and this should be familiar to you if you've been watching the series. Okay, so we're gonna say switch attributes. So we're gonna be checking what's inside our attributes. So let's look at our map file right now. Uh, so what we what we're loading in is the layers right here. So lo we have load and end load layers. Uh, let's see if I named that layers or put layers there. Uh, so that we know that we're loading in our layers. Now these are the attributes that we have to load in our tile sets and our tile dimensions before we actually draw on our map. So this is gonna be our map right here, okay? Uh, so let us go uh, back to our layers. So we need to load in our tile set and our tile dimensions. So we're gonna say case tile set. And then we're gonna load in our tile set. So we gotta put this content dot load texture two D. And I have my tile sets in a tile sets folder. Now, if you don't, you don't have to put this. Or if you if you're gonna have tile sets in a bunch of different directories, then you can put the um the directory inside your map file, right? So you could put like tile slash tile set slash tile set one. But since my all my tile sets are gonna be one directory, then I'll just um do it like this. So I'll put, say tile sets slash, and I'll put plus contents ij and i'll close that off over there put break so we're going to say our tile dimensions so what our tile dimensions is going to specify is how wide 
our tiles are gonna be. So say even in our uh, say we set our tiles to our tiles are 32 by 32 in here, right? But say for whatever reason, let's say like your screen size is 800 by 600, right? Uh, you're gonna want to stretch your tiles so say 40 by 40. So what you would do in the tile dimension, you would set it to 40 by 40, so that you wouldn't have to go and change the width and height of each and every single one of your tiles. And for example, if you have like an effect in your game where you want to increase the size of tiles or whatever, then you can do so um, using this. So we're gonna say tile dimensions is uh sorry no we're gonna say string uh, split contents i j split and I put mine to split by commas right uh so my tile dimensions are thirty two by thirty two. Okay, and they're separated by a comma. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say tile dimensions equals to new vector two, int parse split zero, and we're gonna do int parse split one, and we're gonna put break. Okay, so we loaded in our tile set and our tile dimensions, and just let me check how much time I have. So I'm past 11 minutes, so in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually loading in the map and just hopefully displaying the map by the end of the tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and bye.